In this video, we're gonna talk about the singleton pattern, which many of you have likely heard of at this point. The singleton pattern is both famous and infamous for um, being widely used and misused in many cases. So we're just gonna briefly talk about what the pattern is, how you can use it, and maybe some ways, some alternatives in which you can get around the, the bad parts of the singleton pattern. So just to look at it as an overview, the singleton pattern says two primary things. The first thing it says is that there should only be one object of this type in the level. So the singleton pattern enforces that there will only ever be one instance of this class. So if you try to create new ones in, inside of your level or um, wherever you're instantiating them, it will look and see if a singleton already exists. And if it does, then it will destroy itself. If it looks and sees that the singleton does not exist yet, or there is no instance of it, then it will become that one instance. And then any future ones will just not, they won't really create themselves. So that's the first part. The second part of the singleton, which kind of goes with it, is that because this singleton is always there when you need it, uh, it is it exists inside of the level as a static instance. It means that we have global access. And some people would consider the singleton pattern to be, they would say, a, a glorified global variable. In many ways, it can be. But the reason that it is misused so often is because if anything can access it, it becomes too easy to just throw in dependencies upon the singleton in almost every single script, and it creates a lot of really... Uh, quick spaghetti inside of your code. I mean, it is kind of convenient because you could have any class just very easily call singleton do something because we, we know that there can only be one so it can be accessed from anywhere in the scene because it, it's always there. So that's the singleton pattern. To reiterate the two points, the first point is that it will enforce that there's only ever one instance of this class. And the second point is, that is easily ac accessible from anywhere. And sometimes you only need the first part of that and you don't need the second. And sometimes you just need the second, not the first. So it's really two things rolled into a single pattern. And, and that's why it gets a little bit dicey and, and when you should use it and when you shouldn't. So let's look at a slightly more in-depth level and how to implement this in code. And generally this pattern is implemented by having your singleton class and then at the very top you have a static single uh, or the same type of this class so the class type here and then instance and what this says is that there can only be one shared across all of the all of this type of class there can only be one instance so all of them will share this this little instance right here and the way that you would use this and you know you could do this inside of awake but then you never know if this is going to get called before other classes the better way to use this is to use a property and say get any time the earliest time you can you want to check and see okay we're trying to do something with this class or if we don't already have an instance then assign this instance to be this right here if we already have an instance and this is not empty, then destroy this one. So this this right here is the pattern that prevents multiple instances being created because we're checking and saying, do we already have one? If we do, then destroy it or destroy this in, instead. If we don't, then make this that, you know, the new instance. So that's the whole pattern here, but just also to show you that if you have another class, you can easily access this by typing in the the class dot instance because it's a static we can access it from anywhere we can call anything we want inside the singleton so we could do um you know like a public method we could get some data and so forth and this is where it tends to get abused because we can put anything we want on the singleton and everything just has immediate access you can see how this could be very easily abused but this is the code for how you might start setting this up inside of your, your game. Now, one of the examples that we're gonna look at is just using time of day. Just to show you what this would look like inside of a diagram, we'd have our class time of day, and then we have our static instance at the top that also needs to be a 
type of time of day, and this is our shared instance across all time of day classes. And we could keep track of the current time, but inside of awake, we're, we're going to look and say, okay, do we have one of these in the level? If we don't, checking the shared instance and nothing's been assigned to it yet, then this will now be the time of day instance, the single one that we will use inside of our level. If we already have assigned this to be the one that we wanna use, then we destroy it. Then we're gonna have some other object in the scene. In this case, it could be a level controller, it could be whatever. Um, I think in this case, we're actually just doing this in start. But at some point, we could access this time of day uh, from anywhere and from any script, and we could just say time of day dot instance dot whatever we want. In this case, begin day at midnight. We could set time, like we could set the current time or whatever. We can very easily access this time of day singleton. Now, I also think it's worth talking about how you could avoid a singleton pattern. So, so we are going to look at an example using scriptable objects and how we can, if we only want to access some data and we want that to be accessible from anywhere, we don't, you know, we don't really care to enforce this, that there's only one. This might be a better setup where instead of having floating objects that we never know when they're there and when they're not, we can just have a, a data object saved to file and we have these other classes that we just get a reference to the file right here and then we can access it. We could do whatever we want. And because it's on file, it technically always exists. So we don't have to worry about like when it's created and when it's not. And that helps us get around that part of the singleton. So we're not worried about this, you know, when does it exist and when, when doesn't it? Because it's on file, it's always there. As long as we can get a reference to that file, the level data, then we can manipulate it however we want. And this is a cleaner, better way to handle your dependencies if you just want to access data that you want to always be there. A common type of data that we may want is player data or level data or whatever. So we'll look at an example of how to do this as well. So now we're in Unity and let's take a look at our scene just to see what's happening. I'm gonna hit play. And you'll see that we have this time of day that's shifting the directional light over time. That's gonna be one of our singletons. And we have a few controls here. Um, if we press one or we press two, we can change the music track. I'm gonna do that real quick. That's, so that's one and two. And our music tracks are gonna be controlled by another singleton instance that, we'll look, that we will look at. And Q and W are going to increase the difficulty of the level and W will increase money. Um, this could be whatever you want, but it's just to show you how you can manipulate data without using a singleton and using our scriptable object. So let's take a look at this. Inside of our scene, the first thing we're gonna look at is the time of day. And you'll see here that we actually have two instances of time of day in our scene. We hit play, you'll see that one of them gets created and that's our singleton pattern enforcing that only one can be created at a time. So I'm going to open up this code and our time of day takes a static instance of time of day at the top. We're doing our pattern here, which is if it's, if it's empty, then assign it to be this, this one, this instance on this object, and then make sure that it, you know, stays alive and is always there. And this, but if we've already assigned it, then we want to destroy it. And then we can do whatever we want else here. This is just to make the light rotate or whatever. And in start, we're just beginning at a certain time and an update, we are passing time. So that's our time of day. Again, not really important what the thing is doing to understand the pattern. It's more important to understand this top part and why we would want to do it. So that's time of day, pretty, pretty simple. And if we wanted to access this from anywhere else, um, let me close out some of these other ones. If we wanted to access this from anywhere else, we could just open up another script. And if we added um, time of day dot instance dot, you know, we could set time to uh, 12, like on a button press or whatever. Um, that's one of the things that you can do with, with singletons is just access them from anywhere. So that's why they're both convenient and a little bit scary. So we have our 
singleton pattern inside of our time of day. But you might be thinking by now, maybe there's a way in which you don't have to retype that same exact pattern the entire time. If you do a quick Google for singleton pattern in Unity, there is a provided script that um, I might have done minor tweaking on. You can you can find it on a quick Google search, but it it um, accomplishes a singleton pattern through a generic. And if you've never used a generic class before, it's it's a little confusing to see at first. But basically, we are just taking in a type. Uh, we're taking in a class type right here, and because Anything that we're doing down here is independent on that type, um, you know, with a few exceptions, like we can we can define if we want it to be of, of a certain subtype or whatever over here if we want. Basically, we're just making sure that it's a mono behavior so that we can attach it to a game object. Um, that's why we're calling it there. Long story short, we are creating a generic singleton. I'm using MB for mono behavior just to clarify that it's a singleton to be used on a game object type of um, setup. And inside of here, we are doing a lot more checking. Instead of doing this in awake, we are doing this any time that something tries to access a singleton. So this is called lazy instantiation. It's actually very handy. So instead of doing, instead of setting up our singleton inside of awake, we are using a git method to say, any time, the first time this thing, is accessed by anything and it is not created, then we want to actually create the object. And the reason this is important is imagine a music player. If we had a level that didn't ever need to play music, then why should we even create the music player? It wouldn't make any sense, right? It'd just be wasted resources. If we play a level and there is music in there, the first time we try to check and see what the music is, or we play the music, or we want to switch to a new track, then we're checking to see, hey, um, we want to check this music player to see if we can place music and then it will create itself right here. So this is kind of complicated, but that's all it's doing. It's saying the first time anything tries to get this class, we want to create it and make it our singleton. So pretty handy. And if we wanted to use this script and you know it's it's modular now because it's using generics, <laughs> Let's look at our music player. We have our music player over here. I'm gonna open that up. And inside of our music player, we are inheriting from our singleton, our generic, and we are giving it the type. And you know that's the syntax for what that looks like. But now we have a music player that is a singleton and will create itself the first time anything tries to play music or the first time that music player is, you know, we call play new song or whatever. If we save it and we go to play mode, you'll see that our music player doesn't really exist until we try to play a song. So I'm going to I'm going to hit a button to play a song and you'll see that pop down. See how it created itself right there? Um, so that's the handy way of using this pattern and the more complicated version of the singleton pattern is we are only creating it when we need it, like when something tries to call for it. And when it does, then it becomes the one uh, instance that we will use and we're not gonna create duplicates. So another super handy way of looking at a singleton pattern, and you'll see because we made this generic, we don't have to retype all that code, we can just inherit from it and we can create several different singletons if, if we want. But to caution you before you create several different singletons just like that, I wanna look at a alternative, which is using the scriptable objects uh, sort of setup. And this is gonna be a little bit complicated if you've never used a scriptable object before. So I'll, I'll just walk through this briefly, but I would recommend that uh, you look up some other videos on how to use scriptable objects, but I'll try to explain through this as it relates to Singleton. If all we wanna do is make sure that we can always get certain pieces of data very easily from anywhere, then we may not need the singleton pattern. In this case, maybe all we need is to put the data on file somewhere so that we can easily access it no matter where we are. Because the data is always available, it's always on file, we can get that reference from the scene very easily. So we're gonna do that using a scriptable object. So what we're doing here is we're creating a new class 
of type level data, and we are inheriting from scriptable object. Now, this is an alternative to mono behavior that you might have in your other, um, your other scripts. And this is like a simplified version. We don't get update, we don't get awake and, and some of these other things. Um, I'm pretty sure we don't get awake at least. We get very few methods that we can use by default that we would get on other scripts. However, we can create an instance of this class onto file. So I'm declaring the type of data that I want here. And then I'm creating a button inside of a menu that when I press it, will create a new instance of this class. So we'll have a new instance on file that we can change these variables. And this is where we wanna um, put the button and this is what we want the instance to be called by default. So we're creating a definition for a type of level data, but we, we're not creating it anywhere yet until we click the button. So to create an instance, which I've already created one right here, but um, the way that I set it up inside that class is we right click, go under create, and this is where I, the context menu, where I put it in a location. Um, if we click this, it'll create a new instance of the level data class on file. And we can call this, you know, level two or whatever. And inside of level two, inside of this file, we can change the properties. Now we could expose this in the inspector if we wanna give designer control. In this case, I'm showing you how to not do that, but you could do a serialized field and do it that way. Anyways, just showing you that you can create instances of this on file. So I'm gonna delete that. Now we've created this one that um, you know hasn't really been configured yet, but this instance has access to a level name variable, a level difficulty variable, and a money variable. Now, here's where it comes into play in, in the singleton pattern. Inside of each of these scripts, we are leaving a reference open. So let's say the difficulty increaser. We're leaving a reference open to our type of level data. Now remember that we created an instance of this level data on file right here through our little button menu or whatever. And because this always exists, we can go to our, devil, our difficulty increaser object and we can give it a reference to that asset on file, right? We just drag and drop it right there. And so now this difficulty increaser has a reference to this data object and the data is being stored on this object. So our difficulty increaser just comes in here and you know, on a button press, accesses this level data object that we referenced and manipulates the level difficulty somehow. So you can see that if all we really wanted to do was make sure that we always had some data available, then we can just put that on file as a asset and we can just manipulate it that way. We don't really need a singleton that we have to create inside of our scene or, or whatever. I just wanna show you this example because if you're just looking to easily access data, you might as well do that through scriptable objects and you don't really need a singleton for that and it's only gonna muddy up your code. And a few other examples here, we also have a money increaser. Again, we just get a reference to our level data on file right there as our asset. And inside of our script, we detect on a key press in this case, but at some point we either wanna get the money or we want to change the amount of money. And we can just do that directly by accessing this instance on file. And we do the same thing with the name, right? We can give it a new name, pass it into the level data, and we can change it just like that. So you can see we're not calling this from anywhere, but we are properly getting a reference. But because this reference, this instance exists on file as our scriptable object, um, it's always there and we can just very easily expose a reference and just get it and it's easy to test, it's easy to see. Just a really, really handy, useful alternative to the singleton pattern. So yeah, singleton pattern, it's, it's easy to abuse, but if you're just looking for easy access, I do recommend using a scriptable object structure or any other way that you can uh, get file from, you know, from your projects and not relying on objects to create at runtime if you don't have to. Or you might as well just create the objects and pass it in where you need it um, appropriately. So don't, don't try to skip through this access of control. Uh, that's bad practice. You wanna send it through the proper channels if you can. So anyways, that's the singleton pattern, looking at it through a time of day, 
through a music player that gets created at runtime and I'm showing you a few useful alternatives to uh, the singleton pattern because you do not always need to use it.